my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. Today I'm so excited to share the newest pattern to join the Rosary Apparel collection, the Daisy Dress. I am so so proud of this pattern and completely obsessed with the Daisy Dress. And I've hardly wanted to take this dress off since I made it. So a little bit about the Daisy Dress. It is a v-neck fully buttoned up dress and there are three different daisy dresses in the pattern. There are two sleeve options and one fully lined bodice sleeveless option as well. And also don't forget that you can mix and match any of the sleeves of my other patterns with this pattern to be able to customize it and create a fully different look. The pattern is available in physical paper form for $45 Australian and it's available in digital form for $25 Australian so you can download it and print it and start sewing along with me right away. Purchasing one of my patterns is an amazing way to support me and my channel and allows me to continue creating helpful and inspiring content for you. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make all three versions of the daisy dress. So if you're a visual learner, then you can follow along and sew this dress with me step by step. So without further ado, let's get started and let me show you how to make the daisy dress. Once you have your copy of the daisy pattern, start by cutting out all the pieces in your size. Alternatively, you can use some tracing paper to trace out the pattern in your size so you can keep the pattern intact for use later. For the daisy dress, you can use any light to mid-weight fabric such as cotton, linen, rayon and crepe. And for my dress, I'm using this stunning cotton embroidery on glaze that I'll have a link to down in the description below. Place your cutout pattern pieces onto your fabric and then cut out all of the pieces. Once you've cut out the pieces in your fabric, also cut the front, back and skirt facing pieces out of some iron on interfacing. This part is optional, but I do find the interfacing gives the fabric a bit more structure and strength once the buttons are attached. Iron the cut interfacing onto the wrong sides of the facing pieces. Using a water erasable pen or some tailor's chalk and the bodice back and front templates, mark the three points of each dart onto the wrong side of the fabric pieces. Make each dart by matching the two bottom markings together and fold until the top point of the dart and pin in place. Stitch the dart starting from the point and without backstitching to the bottom of the dart creating a kind of triangle shape like this. Once the darts are sewn, tie off the loose threads at the point with a double knot. Then press the darts flat, making sure to press them towards the centre of the bodice. The darts help to give the bodice a bit of shape. Next, with right sides together, place the bodice fronts onto the bodice back and stitch them together along the shoulder and side edges like this. I personally like to neaten the raw edges with my overlocker after sewing each seam, but you can use the zigzag stitch of your sewing machine instead if you don't own an overlocker. And your bodice should be looking a little something like this. Next, take the pocket pieces and overlock or zigzag stitch the curved raw edges to prevent them from fraying. Then take your front and back skirt pieces and with right sides together, stitch the pockets to the sides of the skirt pieces, matching the notches together. If you've forgotten to cut the notches out, place them approximately 10 centimeters or four inches from the top of the skirt. Once sewn in place, press the pockets open. 
Then with right sides together, place the skirt fronts onto the skirt back, matching the pockets together, and then stitch them together along the side seam, remembering to stitch along the pocket edge. Do this by placing the needle into the fabric when you get to the pocket and turn the fabric to then be able to stitch around the corners of the pocket. Press the skirt seam open and press the pockets towards the skirt front. Next, set your sewing machine to the longest possible setting and sew two rows of gathering stitches along the top edge of the skirt. Then gently pull on the top two threads of the gathering stitches to evenly gather up the skirt until it's approximately the same size as the bodice. Once gathered, pin the bodice to the skirt matching the side seams together. Then stitch the bodice to the skirt, being careful not to catch any fabric underneath as you sew. And then remove any exposed gathering stitches with a seam ripper and give the gathers a good press with your iron. And your dress should be coming together nicely. Now let's make the facing. With right sides together, pin and stitch the skirt facings to the front facings like this. Next, pin and stitch the front facings to the back facing along the shoulder edge like this. Overlock or zigzag stitch the outside edge of the facing. And then hem the outside edge of the facing in by about one centimeter or half an inch. Then stitch the hemmed edge in place. Next, with right sides together and matching the shoulder and skirt seams together, pin and stitch the facing to the dress. Once stitched in place, clip the curved edge, being careful not to accidentally snip the stitches, and trim away any excess fabric. Then fold and press the facing to the inside of the dress. Next, overlock or zigzag stitch the bottom edge of the skirt. Then with right sides together, fold the facing onto the skirt and stitch them together along the bottom edge like this. Do the same for the other side. Then clip the corners and turn the facing back to the inside of the dress. This should enclose all of the seams onto the inside of the dress, creating crisp corners at the front of the dress. Next, press the bottom edge of the skirt in by about one centimeter or half an inch. And then stitch the hemmed edge in place.
Then top stitch along the front and neck edge of the dress, stitching the facing in place as you sew. This should enclose the raw edges in behind the top stitching and your dress should now have a nicely finished front and neck edge. For sleeve A, start by stitching two rows of gathering stitches in between the notches along the top edge of the sleeve. Then with right sides together, fold the sleeve in half and stitch it together along the side edge like this. Next, hem the raw edge by folding and pressing in by about 2 centimeters or 3 quarters of an inch twice. And then stitch the hemmed edge in place, leaving a small opening to be able to thread some elastic through like this. Take some 16 millimeter or 1 quarter of an inch wide elastic and measure it so it sits comfortably around your upper arm. Cut two pieces at this measurement. Then attach the elastic to a safety pin and thread it into the sleeve casing. Once thread all the way through, stitch the two ends of elastic together with a zigzag stitch. And then sew the opening closed. Gently gather up the gathering stitches we made before, then with right sides together and matching the underarm seams, pin and stitch the sleeves to the bodice. Once stitched in place, remove any exposed gathering stitches with the seam ripper. And your dress should now have some amazing puffy sleeves. Next, take the buttonhole guide provided in the pattern and mark out the positions of the buttonholes along the right side of the center front. Now let me show you how to stitch a buttonhole. You can use the buttonhole foot of your machine if you like, but if you don't own a buttonhole foot, simply set your sewing machine to a zigzag stitch and change your stitch length to 0.4 and your stitch width to 2.5. Stitch along the two lengths of your buttonhole marking. Then change your stitch length to 0.2 and your stitch width to 5.5 and sew a few stitches along the top and bottom of your buttonhole to finish it. Tie the back threads together in a double knot and then snip away all of the loose threads. Using a seam ripper, open your buttonhole by cutting the fabric inside, being really careful not to cut any of your stitching. And you should have a nicely stitched buttonhole like this. Repeat these steps for the remaining nine buttonholes. Once all of your buttonholes have been stitched, overlap the right side of the front onto the left side and mark the positions of the buttons with a water erasable pen or some tailor's chalk. Then hand sew the buttons onto the dress. And your beautiful daisy dress is complete. Now let me show you how to make the sleeves for dress B. Like sleeve A, start by stitching two rows of gathering stitches in between the notches. Then fold the sleeve in half with right sides together and stitch it together along the side edge and then hem the bottom edge of the sleeve. Next, sew three rows of sharing along the bottom of the sleeve using the sleeve template as a guide for the position. I've shared a previous video all about how to set up your sewing machine for sharing, which I'll have a link to in the description of this video if you need a little bit of help with how to get started with sharing. Use the steam of your iron to shrink the elastic a little bit more and then give the sharing a good press. 
and you should now have a pair of elasticated puffy sleeves like this. Simply attach them to your dress the same way we attach the sleeves for dress A. Now let me show you how to make the sleeveless version of the daisy, which is also known as dress C. Start by cutting out the front and back templates in both a main and lining fabric. For reference, the lining fabric should be a similar composition to your main fabric. Then cut the front and back facings out of some iron-on interfacing only. Then iron the interfacing to the wrong sides of your main fabric back and fronts, matching and lining up the edges together. Then mark out and stitch the bodice starts for both the main and lining pieces. Next, with right sides together, place the fronts onto the back of both the main and lining pieces and stitch them together along the shoulder edge only, like this. Then with right sides together, place the lining onto the main fabric matching the shoulder seams together and stitch them together along the armhole and neck edges like this. Once stitched, clip the curved edges being careful not to accidentally snip any of the stitching and then turn the bodice right side out. Give the edges a good press with your iron and you should have something that looks like this. Then with right sides together, fold the bodice fronts onto the bodice back of both the fabric and lining pieces. Match the underarm seam together. And then stitch them together at the side seams like this. Once stitched, give the side edge and armhole a good press with your iron. And your fully lined sleeveless bodice is complete. For this dress, I'm also going to show you how to optionally shorten the skirt. Simply cut along the dotted lines of the skirt template and either make the skirt that size or overlap the cut pieces to your desired length. Don't forget to cut the skirt facing to match the modified skirt template. When making the skirt for dress C, fold the skirt facing template in half lengthways and cut it out of the iron-on interfacing only. Then iron the interfacing to the wrong side of the centre front edges of the skirt front pieces. Hem the skirt front edge by folding and pressing in by 1cm or half an inch and then fold and press again so that the interfacing is covered. Stitch the folded fabric in place. Then simply finish the skirt as we did for dress A and then gather up the top edge of the skirt until it's the same size as the bodice. With right sides together, pin and stitch the skirt to the main fabric of the bodice only. Then fold and press the raw edge of the bodice lining in by 1cm or half an inch and then pin the lining to the inside of the dress, enclosing the raw edges to the inside of the bodice. Then hand stitch the lining to the inside of the dress. Next, top stitch along the front edge of the dress and along the armhole edges. Then hem the entire bottom edge of the dress and stitch the buttonholes and attach the buttons as I showed for dress A. 
and if you're making a shorter version of the dress, you won't need as many buttons. And the sleeveless version is complete and you now know how to make all three versions of the daisy pattern. Let me know in the comments below which version is your favourite. So how do these finished daisy dresses look? So I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of how to make the daisy dress. If you have purchased a copy of the pattern, then thank you so, so much. Your support means the absolute world. And I hope you love this pattern as much as I do. If you have had a go at the daisy pattern and made a daisy dress of your own, then I would love to see it. So be sure to tag me at Rosary Apparel and use the hashtag Rosary Apparel as well when you share your photos on Instagram so I can see. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more sewing videos like this one. Thanks again so, so much for your support. I have absolutely loved making this pattern and my whole YouTube journey up until this point has just been absolutely bonkers and it's all thanks to you watching my videos. So yeah, thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. It honestly means the world. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for watching. Thank you.